はい、どうぞよろしくお願いします。Hello, I've just been introduced. I am Suzuki. I'm a freelance writer. And as was just explained, I did spend、uh, time、uh, in, June, in July and August until August 22nd working at、uh, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant belonging to Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO.、Um, as a result of having spent so much time at this power plant, I probably have received a great deal of radiation exposure. But as another Japanese、uh, person, a Japanese former minister, said, I probably won't give you any of my radiation. I won't spread my radiation to you. In regard to what I'm going to be talking about today,、um, I'm sure there are things that you are interested in and there are things that I want to talk about. So I would like to begin、uh, by explaining that there are two major topics that、um, I、uh, basically have put into this book. One has to do with、uh, the relationship between、uh, the、uh, nuclear power plant industry and、uh, the Yakuza. And the other、uh, aspect that I'm covering、uh, is basically this current state of the Fukushima、uh, Daiichi nuclear power plant.、Uh, if you have any questions on either of these topics, I will try my very best to give you a sincere and honest answer. The first thing I'd like to begin by saying is that,、um, as you know, publicly, uh, this uh, bringing to a closure uh, the uh, accident that occurred at、uh, Fukushima、uh, Daiichi nuclear power plant is considered to be an all Japan project. In other words, the Japanese government has declared that all、uh, the entire government and the entire people of Japan will all come together to cooperate to bring closure to this terrible accident.、Uh, however, I would like to say up front that this is simply a facade. In reality,、uh, things are working very, very differently. For example, if you look at the plant manufacturers, Uh, in regard to the、uh, nuclear power plant, there are two major manufacturers、uh, that are involved. One is Hitachi and one is Toshiba.、Um, however, the reality is that each company、uh, has its own technology and is proceeding to try to bring、uh, things to a close、uh, on its own. However, what Hitachi does is not, that information is not shared with Toshiba, and what Toshiba does, that information is also not shared with、um, Hitachi. As a result, although on the surface it's supposed to be an all Japan effort, in reality,、uh, everyone is working. On their own. And as a result, if I believe、uh, those, everybody was truly working together in, in an all Japan effort, there would be more suggestions, more ideas, more proposals that would come up. There would be less leakage, leakage of radiation. Um, putting aside、uh, the question of whether nuclear power plants、uh, should be、uh, operated or not, whether Japan should have nuclear energy or not,、uh, I would like to explain to you that、uh, when I look at the current situation of the Fukushima nuclear, Daiichi nuclear power plant,、um, I would describe it very honestly as being an out situation, literally. What I mean by this is that,、uh, as you may recall, immediately after、uh, the accident occurred,、uh, the U.S. government、uh, issued a recommendation uh, that uh, people living within 80 kilometers、uh, from the nuclear power plant should all be evacuated. In other words, That area should、uh, not be、uh, lived in by、uh, human beings.、Um, I believe that that first determination, that first suggestion or recommendation was absolutely correct. And what I mean by this is that、um, I have taken many measurements and I have spoken with many nuclear related experts, and probably an area equivalent to about 80 kilometers、uh, surrounding the plant、uh, should be uh, evacuated. Uh, as uh, you may know, Fukushima Prefecture is a very large prefecture, and there is,、uh, there, it's divided into three sections. One is called the Hamadori, which means basically the coast along the coastline section. And then there is the central section, and then there is the western part. But、uh, I believe that.、Uh, It was because so many large cities、uh, in Fukushima Prefecture,、um, specifically Iwaki City,、uh, Fukushima City, and Koryama City, are located in the central district, that the government decided it would be too difficult, probably,、uh, or too impossible, probably, to evacuate these large cities, that、uh, the government came up with this 20 kilometer. Uh, uh, re uh, restriction. In other words, people living within 20 kilometers of the uh, plant uh, should be evacuated and not the 80 kilometers. However, as I said earlier, all of the、uh, people that I've spoken with who have any expertise or background in nuclear、uh, technology have said that、uh, those people living in that 80 kilometer area. Are exposed to a great deal of radiation. In fact, some people have said it is almost as though they are living inside a nuclear power plant. So, I'd like to give you、um, the latest updated information about、uh, the Fukuichi、uh, Daiichi plant.、Uh, as you know, the、uh, Japanese government has put together a plan、uh, to achieve cold shutdown as quickly as possible. Because they are in such a rush to achieve this cold shutdown,、um, I believe that、uh, the kind of、uh, construction work or the repair work that is being done at the plant is quite shoddy. What I mean by this, just as an example, is that、uh, a great deal of piping is now being laid out、uh, to handle the contaminated water. However, normally、uh, in a nuclear power plant, the 
pipes that are used are of a special nature. They're special quality. Uh, they're very um, resistant. Uh, they're, they're, they last for many, many years. However, because there is such speed to get this piping uh, laid in, uh, what is being used are very uh, inexpensive plastic, very flexible uh, kinds of pipes. What I mean by that is that they're not, uh, very, they're not uh, going to last many, many years. And not only that, there is a concern that uh, Fukushima, which gets very cold in the wintertime, there is a concern that those pipes might freeze during the winter, in which case they might very possibly crack. And again, you'd have a leakage of a contaminated water problem again. In other words, we're seeing many, many problems arise from the shoddy rushed work that is being done at the, at the power plant. As you know, there are six nuclear reactors at the Fukushima uh, plant, and in regard to the uh, containment buildings, uh, numbers one through number four uh, had explosions and they were uh, damaged. Uh, however, uh, at this time, uh, the most positive news that comes up from this nuclear power plant is that IHI, which is a, 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 very, um, excuse me, a, a very important manufacturer that works under the Toshiba line ha has decided that by the end of the year, they will put a hole in the uh, containment vessel in uh, the reactor number two. And the reason they're choosing reactor number two is that they consider it to be the, in the best state of the four where there was tremendous damage. Um, but uh, even though they have this idea to make a hole to see what the insides of the containment chamber or containment vessel uh, might be, uh, there is concern that no one really knows what the state uh, of the insides are. They don't know what has happened to the nuclear uh, pellets, the fuel pellets. In fact, um, I, in summary, I can say that uh, although there is this schedule that has been put in place uh, to achieve cold shutdown, no one really knows uh, what the state of the insides of the nuclear reactors are. Uh, as a result, uh, the government has done as much as it can to try to um, create the appearance, at least, uh, that things are being done. For example, roads are being uh, restored. Um, there are uh, there is a system now in put into place to um, pour water into the uh, on the reactor so that they will be uh, cooled. However, uh, this is a circulating system, and there is great concern that the water may leak from this uh, system as well. Also, um, I would like to uh, refer to the Fukushima 50. Uh, this is a phrase uh, that has gained attention throughout the world. Um, as you know, this refers to uh, the uh, people who uh, have stayed on at the Fukushima nuclear power plant uh, even after uh, the first hydrogen explosion. These are people who worked for um, Toshiba, Hitachi, um, engineers, etc. And certainly, uh, the fact that they have been praised throughout the world is a positive thing, and I certainly join uh, in praising them. However, uh, I have spoken with many uh, people who work uh, for the plant manufacturer uh, excuse me, uh, for the plant manufacturers and for uh, people who have great knowledge about um, radiation exposure, uh, they all say that to work at the uh, Fukushima Daiichi uh, power plant is basically uh, being given, is equivalent to being given an order to die. In other words, uh, the crisis situation uh, that we saw at Fukushima uh, Daiichi nuclear power plant has not changed. We're still in a crisis situation there. Um, in regard to uh, the information that is being given by the Japanese government and by TEPCO, I think most of you in the foreign press uh, are quite skeptical of this information. I myself, being Japanese, do not wish to uh, speak uh, negatively about my own country's government, but I can say that the information uh, that is coming from TEPCO and the Japanese government is inadequate. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that uh, it's simply that uh, TEPCO is lying. Um, I think that uh, the management uh, is looking at the information that they are getting and uh, what, the, what information they are able to understand, they give it out in small pieces. And when I say they give out the information that they understand, uh, I do have some skepticism as to whether the management people really have the uh, scientific knowledge, technical knowledge, to understand uh, the information that they, are, they have access to. As a journalist, therefore, I feel it is extremely important uh, for us uh, to be able to have uh, enough uh, scientific understanding, technological understanding of uh, nuclear power plants, and nuclear energy, etc. So, uh, it is only in this way that we will be able to pierce through uh, the false information, if there is false information that is being given by uh, TEPCO. I would also like to say uh, that uh, all Japanese nuclear power plants, uh, and this is um, a rather extreme statement, but I would like to say that all nuclear power plants in Japan are based, are built on a foundation of injustice or unfairness. What I mean by this is the fact that um, all nuclear power plants are built on the assumption that the workers who work at these plants are going to be exposed to radiation. Of course, as you know, um, uh, publicly uh, these uh, workers have been protected and they are not exposed to radiation.
Uh, for example, uh, when you enter any kind of um, possible early radioactive area, not just uh, the nuclear uh, power plant at, at Daiichi Fukushima, but whenever you enter any uh, sort of dangerous territory, uh, you're supposed to wear a dosimeter uh, called an AD, AD, APD on your breast. However, uh, it can be manipulated. For example, uh, if you, depending on which way the dosimeter faces, for example, if you turn the, um, f the um, excuse me, the upper, the outer portion, I guess, uh, toward your breast, then you can extend the amount of time that you can work for 10 more minutes. And if the radiation uh, is such in an area that uh, the, uh, the radiation is higher uh, in the air, in other words, uh, you would be more exposed to radiation in your upper body than in your lower body, the way to get around this is you take the dosimeter and you put it on your sock. And that way you can extend your working time by 30 more minutes. Uh, on the other hand, if you're, if you're going to be working on top of the uh, containment vessel, for example, uh, there is going to be uh, less radiation uh, in the bottom, so you're going to put uh, under you, so there you're going to put your um, dosimeter not uh, on your, under your socks, but up high up on your shoulder. I would like to explain, of course, uh, what, uh, TEPCO does not instruct us to take these measures, uh, but uh, they give us an allotment of how many people can work on a certain um, process and how much uh, of a budget they have and if we consider then how, mon how many people can work on this project and uh, what has to be done, then it, once you do some calculations you realize that people are going to have to spend a certain amount of time, each person is going to have to spend a certain amount of time and the only way that that can be allowed is if you cheat using your uh, dosimeter. Um, everyone understands this, even the people at TEPCO understand this, but they do not say it publicly and as a result, if a problem later occurs, they can say, well, the people on site, the workers made their own arbitrary decision to do this. It's not our fault. As another example, immediately after the first hydrogen explosion, TEPCO gave out an order uh, to, or uh, a request uh, to all of these um, uh, dispatching, labor dispatching companies, and they said, send us people who don't mind dying. At that time, uh, it was really very much a panic situation, perhaps, but um, normally when you enter any area where there might be possible uh, radiation exposure, you're always supposed to be issued a special uh, kind of uh, booklet or, or that uh, it basically uh, measures or uh, monitors uh, your uh, total radiation exposure. However, um, at that moment, right after the hydrogen explosion, no such booklets were issued. Also, normally before you enter such a site, you have to undergo a health examination. Health examinations are also foregrown at this time. Also, usually there is a, a list uh, of names of workers who attend a site, and that list also was not prepared. Well, I guess in retrospect you could say that this was an extraordinary situation because that's how panicked everyone was. In spite of this, however, once uh, things settled down, uh, then TEPCO turned to uh, the companies uh, that it asks uh, to find people to work at the site. We, they call them partner companies. TEPCO turned to the partner companies and suddenly demanded that uh, the uh, lists of workers who attended the site and uh, the results of the health examinations for all the workers be submitted to TEPCO. Um, however, uh, when we consider that uh, in uh, March, April, that very, very difficult time, uh, Many, many people were assembled, uh, and because uh, these lists of names were not put together, no health examinations were conducted, really, there's no way to track down uh, who was uh, at the site in March and April. Um, most of them have already left the site. Um, many of them have left their companies. So it's just very, very difficult to find uh, these people. And also, the fact that they're now asking for health examination uh, to be conducted, or f not only for the health examination records in the past, but for health examinations to be conducted now, for people who worked at the site in March in April, it, these health examination results really make no sense. They would have, they're meaningless to conduct them at such a, a late date. Still, uh, TEPCO is demanding of its partner companies, and its partner companies are basically uh, its uh, subcontractors, uh, to produce this data. As a result, what is happening, uh, and the re in regard to what is happening, perhaps this is a very Japanese way uh, of uh, people uh, working, or maybe it's only a, a way of working that is unique to the nuclear power plant industry in Japan. I do not know. But uh, under normal circumstances, uh, these uh, subcontractors, uh, these partner companies, uh, we should say, look, TEPCO, it's too late to ask for this kind of information. We cannot possibly produce it. They should, in other words, reject uh, the uh, request or order from uh, TEPCO. But 
being Japanese or being part of the nuclear power industry, I don't know why this is so, but they do not say that because they realize that their livelihoods, their futures are very, very closely intertwined with uh, TEPCO. So what they are doing, and uh, TEPCO, again, is not giving any specific orders. Uh, they understand the situation, but they are putting pressure on the partners' companies to come up with this uh, information. And as a result, what is happening is that these partner companies have no option but to basically fabricate documents and basically submit them. TEPCO knows this is what's happening, uh, but uh, it can always fall back on its public statements and say, we never ordered any of this to, be, uh, to happen. And if this uh, news gets out into the mass media, they can always protect themselves by saying, well, it was the partner companies that on their own initiative did this. This is what is happening with all nuclear power plants in Japan. However, um, I'm not uh, thinking of this uh, uh, situation in a very, very hopeless way. I think there are still uh, lights of hope. Uh, in other words, what I'm saying is that uh, the manufacturers, the people who have the technological background, uh, people at Hitachi and Toshiba have many, many actual ideas as to how to bring closure to this terrible situation. Uh, however, uh, what has happened is that the Japanese government and TEPCO have officially declared in their announcements that basically uh, the situation is under control. We have gone over the worst part of the crisis. In fact, as a result, most Japanese people are under the impression that uh, things are more or less winding down. It's only a matter of time before everything uh, is completely solved, resolved. As a result of this uh, uh, understanding among the uh, general public, uh, the budget for dealing with this accident has been drastically reduced. What this means is that although the people from Hitachi and uh, Toshiba come with many, many good ideas uh, that if implemented could help resolve the situation very quickly or, or in a much better way, they're told by TEPCO, I'm sorry, we don't have any money, we can't do this. So this is the kind of um, unfairness or injustice uh, on which uh, the nuclear power plant industry uh, is based at present. And it is on the uh, basis of this um, structure of the nuclear power plant industry that the Yakuza have been able to uh, increase their influence. And uh, I would like to explain, however, that uh, after the uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant accident, it was not as though the Yakuza suddenly barged in uh, on this situation and forced themselves in. Uh, the Yakuza were originally, uh, even before the accident, a part of the local community. Uh, uh, in other words, they were part of the local, regional nuclear power plant uh, community. Their presence is something that um, people in the region have always accepted. Uh, this is something, again, however, uh, that if we were to uh, confront uh, to, uh, TEPCO with this information, they, their first response would be to actually deny it. And if, however, we were able to present proof that Yakuza were involved uh, in uh, the nuclear power plants or the um, resolution of this uh, accident, they would probably say, well, see, it has nothing to do with us. It's uh, the partner companies that on their own initiative uh, arbitrarily uh, began to work with Yakuza. We have nothing to do with this. Um, I have many, many other things to say, but I know I'm running out of time. So I would like to conclude by saying one last thing, which is that 1F, and what I mean by 1F, it, this means the Fukushima Daiichi, or number one nuclear power plant, where this accident took place. Uh, the uh, bringing to a closure, bringing to a resolution of this accident, uh, there is absolutely no progress being made. In other words, I believe that we are now beginning the main event. Uh, in regard to this, uh, ac the aftermath of this accident. So I'd like to show you some photographs that I took while I was working uh, at, in Fukushima. And uh, the camera that I used was what I just showed you. It's actually a camera embedded in a watch. Uh, it has uh, a great deal of memory, four megabytes, mega, mega gigas, sorry, MGs, sorry. Um, and it uh, is able to tell, take not only um, still shots, but also um, moving um, images as well. It can also record sound. Uh, although it has great memory, it still has a, it's called a pinhole camera. In other words, uh, the, the resolution uh, of the uh, photographs are not very good. And basically, because I was writing for a magazine, I took a lot of still photographs, but I also did, uh, just in case, take some uh, moving pictures as well. Uh, so we didn't really uh, talk about this uh, before in advance, but um, whenever explanations are necessary, I'll add some comments. This uh, is in the uh, Toshiba's uh, shelter where uh, workers would uh, basically wait to be called or take a rest. It shows you some of the, um, a few, uh, excuse me, a slide before that shows you some of the um, exposure uh, figures. Um, I was working in July and August, which are the hottest months of the year. As a result, uh, more people uh, were suffering uh, from uh, heat exposure or heat stroke rather than um, radiation uh, exposure. And as a result, there were many of these uh, um, excuse me, posters um, set up all over the place warning people to be, um, uh, be very careful about not uh, suffering from heat stroke. Having said this, however, almost every once every two or three days, someone would collapse and have to be carried away and they would not be important enough or serious enough to be covered by the news. 
this is a store uh, in uh, Iwaki uh, City, and uh, it basically sells um, work clothes for people who work in construction, etc. And already when I arrived, they were already selling something called Tybeck, which are special uh, clothing that you wear to protect yourself from radiation exposure. Um, in regard to 1F, uh, the Fukushima Daiichi air plant, uh, everyone had to wear a mask that completely covered your face. Uh, and uh, there were five or six different uh, types that you could choose from. Uh, and this was the one that was most popular among the workers. The reason it was most popular among the workers was that it was very easy to put on and take off. Also, even if you had glasses on, uh, you would not have to suffer any kind of leakage. Okay, these are um, just uh, on the left-hand side, this is my name tag uh, that I wore when I was working. And on the right-hand side, this is a dosimeter. Uh, it measures only uh, gamma rays and beta rays. But as I mentioned earlier, if you just reverse it and, f and have the opening uh, facing yourself, then you can extend uh, the amount of time you can work. In other words, you can cut down on uh, the readings uh, that, lim that uh, express your ex uh, radiation exposure. Excuse me. I chose uh, this mask rather than the other mask that I showed you earlier, which was very popular, because I thought this looked cooler. It was more stylish. Uh, always at every side, uh, there would be these gentlemen. You see that they have a red stripe uh, on their backs. Uh, they are uh, basically uh, people who look after the safety of the workers and who also work to monitor the radiation exposure levels. Uh, they don't actually do the construction work. They just watch us, monitor us. Uh, I would also like to explain that um, on the bottom right-hand side you, uh, corner, you see some uh, dates and some um, times. But uh, I was already intending uh, from the very beginning uh, to uh, do an expose uh, on this matter. And if the actual uh, uh, photographs with the actual dates and times had been shown, then probably the uh, subcontractor that hired me would have been exposed. And I wanted to protect him. So from the very beginning, I intended to cheat on the number so the dates are not accurate. Uh, this is a building uh, that is uh, on the left-hand side uh, of the property as soon as you enter the main gate. Uh, and this was uh, a building that was used by the partner uh, companies where people could uh, take some rest. Uh, what I want, they, they, there was a lot of equipment inside, but what I wanted to show you, actually, I couldn't show you because there's actually a big whiteboard behind uh, the uh, rolls of equipment that uh, I was the person was leaning against. And the point about this whiteboard is that if you wanted to have a cigarette, you could take off your mask and smoke behind the, uh, the whiteboard board and nobody would notice. And uh, in many, many places, uh, there were these meters. And basically, uh, they calculate uh, the uh, humidity and uh, the temperature. And as a result of these two uh, figures, they are able to indicate when people should not be working. But as a result of the fact that uh, I was working in the midsummer season, uh, all of these meters said, you cannot work here. You cannot work here. And as a result, nobody paid any attention to these meters. Uh, and this uh, is in regard to the masks and uh, the um, Tybex, or which are the protective radiation um, uh, clothing. Uh, basically, uh, if you go to work uh, at the power plant, you have to wear all of this uh, an entire set uh, in the morning. When you come back, you wear another set. Uh, and then uh, if you have to go again, you again wear another set and come back another set. In other words, um, of course, everything is uh, uh, monitored and uh, for, ch for radiation exposure. But uh, generally, if you make two trips, uh, you wear four pieces of clothing and four masks, and everything has to be discarded. And that's a mountain of equipment that has to be discarded, clothing and masks. Uh, workers uh, are also screened for radiation exposure levels, uh, and uh, they are expo they are screened when they come back uh, uh, after they have worked. Uh, but for those of you who um, have ever touch this kind of equipment, to use this kind of equipment, you know that it is, frankly, very easy to cheat on the figures. Uh, there was a medical clinic within the J village uh, where the crews were working. Uh, and uh, on the surface, it seemed like a very nice clinic because everybody had free access to it. Uh, it was free. Uh, and even if you came uh, and uh, had an examination uh, for feeling bad, etc., uh, the information would not be disclosed to the parent company. Uh, however, the reality was that uh, if you stayed too long and, uh, and visited this clinic, then you would probably miss the bus that would be going back to the dormitories. And if then you had to take a taxi, it would cost 15,000 yen. $150 uh, to get back uh, to the village. So um, I watched how many people actually used uh, this clinic, and it would only be maybe perhaps three people would come in, maybe four or five at the very most. Um, in case uh, there was uh, an incident where uh, someone was found to have suffered from acute uh, heavy levels of radiation exposure, uh, there was great uh, state-of-the-art equipment, for example, a special tent would be erected, etc. But it was never used, uh, as far as I uh, understood. Uh, the kind of um, 
medicines that were given out were basically cold medications, things like that. And I would also like to mention that all of the doctors who were employed by this clinic uh, were employees of TEPCO. In regard to um, acute radiation poisoning, uh, it is widely known that uh, the first uh, part of your body that is damaged is your blood uh, supply. Uh, as a result, uh, from the very beginning, immediately after this accident, uh, experts in the medical field uh, began to say that uh, for workers who were going into uh, the nuclear power plant uh, territory, uh, in order to deal with the possibility that they might eventually suffer from acute radiation poisoning, they should have uh, some of their blood samples um, uh, extracted and preserved, specifically uh, the these are stem cells that uh, produce uh, blood. Uh, in fact, uh, the person who m most uh, said this was a doctor named Dr. Taniguchi of the Toranamon Hospital in Tokyo. Uh, he, is a uh, he is a specialist in hematology, and he immediately uh, called upon many, many other hospitals throughout the nation, and as a result, uh, there was a system put into place only a few days after uh, the first hydrogen explosion to be able to deal with this situation. He also asked many pharmaceutical companies uh, for contributions, and I think um, American pharmaceutical companies also um, responded to his call. As a result, um, a few days after uh, the uh, hydro first hydrogen explosion, uh, supplies of a very important medication uh, for the extraction of uh, these uh, uh, me, stem cells of producing blood uh, arrived at Narita Airport. In spite of the fact that this wonderful system and preparation uh, was done, to date, only myself and one other person has had uh, their um, th this uh, uh, blood-producing stem cells uh, preserved, extracted, and preserved. This is the uh, Toshiba shelter or uh, resting place. Uh, this uh, shows you where the contaminated water is stored, and this is where uh, the pipes that I uh, explained earlier might freeze uh, in the winter uh, are being used. Uh, this is uh, something that is uh, being done by Arriva and Kurilon, uh, in other words, a Japanese and a U.S. Uh, uh, joint attempt to try to deal, process the contaminated water. All the buses or uh, other vehicles that we rode always had this uh, poster in the front which said emergency vehicle. Uh, as you remember, uh, after uh, the first attempt was to try to achieve a cold shutdown using water, and uh, the self-defenses were deployed uh, into the area. However, water supplies were not um, available at that time. Uh, afterwards, uh, and the truck that you saw a few months ago was one of the uh, trucks supplying uh, water. Many other kinds of equipment, for example, a very, very tall uh, piece of equipment uh, that, that had a hose attached, uh, nicknamed the giraffe, was also brought in later. Um, I, know, I showed you uh, a blue tank earlier that contained uh, contaminated water. That is being buried right now, and it's going to be covered with a steel plate. It gives you an idea of just how severely contaminated the water is. Uh, these are uh, letters uh, which have been uh, sent from people all over the world encouraging the workers at Fukushima. Everyone can look at them. This is another one as well. Uh, these are just uh, some uh, pieces of equipment, uh, chains to pull up heavy things. Uh, this is a scene from uh, where I was working. We could see uh, reactor uh, building number four and number three. In number three, we could also see the uh, uh, fuel pool, uh, spent fuel pool, but uh, I had great skepticism about what was actually in the pool if there were any pellets inside there remaining. I'm going to show you a short video. Um, I really wanted to be able to show you all of the uh, conversations that were taking place and to show you uh, the uh, faces and the badges uh, that indicated who these people were, but I was told for privacy reasons I had to eliminate them. So it doesn't ha it's not as powerful a video as I would hope, but it still will give you some idea. Uh, whenever you leave uh, J Village, you have to go uh, undergo three, um, two screenings. One is uh, with a private security company and one is with the police. This is in J Village. Uh, when you get there, you have to choose uh, your own size uh, for your clothing. Uh, the surgical masks are if you're going to be working at uh, uh, 2F, which is the uh, number two of Fukushima nuclear power plant. Um, also, I forgot to mention this in my uh, steel photographs, uh, but uh, there were many, many uh, private cars uh, that were used uh, in this area. This is inside the shelter. And again, there are these posters saying, be careful about not suffering from heat stroke. Having said this, uh, there was actually no, there were no measures to help people avoid heat stroke. And so this is how you're dressed, and you put on your helmet, and then you're taken by bus to your respective location. These are contaminated water tanks. I'm also taking the same route on this bus uh, has a, uh, that has already been uh, exposed or presented to the media. In other words, media have walked, driven along the same route. However, I think there's been a great deal of um, censorship, and so not all of the um, uh, video footage that's been shot has actually been shown to the public.
Uh, this is not a shelter. This is inside what we call the um, seismically isolated building. It's the um, sort of central, central headquarters. It's where Mr. Yoshida, the head of the plant, works. This is where we receive our dosimeters. Uh, everywhere uh, on the ground you see uh, these uh, sheets uh, being um, taped to the floor and it, every now and then you have places where they have these kind of sticky materials so that if you do bring in some radiation with you it gets picked up. Um, when we first pick up our uh, decimeters, uh, they start out at zero, but before we uh, even uh, leave the shelters, uh, the readings have gone up to zero uh, point zero two or so. Uh, the uh, blue plates that people are carrying around are blue steel plates, which are going to be used to block off some of the radiation. Uh, this is uh, the work uh, involved in laying out the pipes to deliver the contaminated water. I would also like to explain that uh, IHI, uh, which is involved in this work here, was using the proper pipes, the very sturdy pipes, uh, not the flimsy pipes I mentioned earlier. Under the uh, steel plate that you saw in the background, that's where the contaminated water tanks are buried, and now uh, pipes are being attached to those tanks. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have any shots, you know, long shots of the uh, reactor buildings, but we, we were told repeatedly, try not to go outside as much as possible, because the longer you're outside, the more uh, radiation you're going to be exposed to. Uh, this is in the uh, Sully for Toshiba. We are uh, working in um, laying pipes. Uh, whenever equipment was working, specifically that funny buzzing noise that you hear is the crane operating in the background. It was a really unpleasant noise and all of the workers really felt uncomfortable hearing it so constantly. Uh, I had no particular skills to work in the plant and therefore my work was very, very basic and simple. I basically was in charge of sweeping. Uh, this is also uh, inside of the Sully. You can see that it is quite um, cluttered, not well cleaned. Um, I believe that uh, because this area was uh, where a contaminated water had uh, stayed for some time, um, I believe that the exposure, uh, the radiation levels in this area were quite high. Um, this was uh, on a day when there was rain and we were taking refuge in uh, a shelter. Uh, this is where we're undergoing screening at a shelter. Uh, when one screens you, you can use this equipment in very different ways. If you use it very, very slowly, if you move the equipment very slowly, you get a higher reading. But my impression was that the, uh, the equipment was being used very fast. And also, you can apparently change the settings. There are several different kinds of uh, settings that can be used, but we were never told what setting was being used for us. So this would be a typical day. We'd uh, get up and uh, gather at the meeting place at 4 a.m. Uh, we would finish the first round of work, and we would come back uh, to the uh, uh, excuse me, this resting place of around 12 o'clock or 1, 1 p.m., and we would be screened uh, to check our radiation exposure. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, I believe that the um, monitoring equipment was used uh, in a very fast way so that we were not able to get a really accurate reading. There were seven different kinds of settings that could be used to, different, to measure different ranges of radiation exposure, but we were never told what those ranges were. Uh, there was a buzzer that was supposed to go off if, if something uh, was serious, but the buzzer apparently was cut. So what I'm saying is that uh, the screening that we underwent was basically a performance, not serious. Thank you very much for your speech. Uh, Rick Wallace from the Australian newspaper. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Having seen what you've seen at that plant, do you believe uh, nuclear power has any ongoing future in, in Japan? And also with regard to your assessment that no uh, progress has been made at the plant, obviously TEPCO and the government tell us that the reactor core temperatures have been below 100 for some time now. So how, how do you square that with your assessment that no progress has been made and the next uh, crisis is almost upon us. Thank you. Uh, in regard to the future of the nuclear industry in Japan, I, I really cannot say what will happen to nuclear power uh, in the future. What I can say, however, is that uh, for the past 40 years, uh, the Japanese government has pushed forward with this uh, supporting a nuclear energy policy. If they decide to somehow change course, stop, give up nuclear energy, they would have to uh, have a tremendous, um, it would require tremendous effort, it would require tremendous budget, and it would also require a great deal of deregulation as well. Uh, in regard to this uh, achieving cold shutdown, uh, it is true that uh, TEPCO has achieved um, cold shutdown um, less than 100 degrees, as you've mentioned. But the problem is, uh, can they maintain this uh, situation for years and years to come? And can they maintain it without uh, presenting a burden on the workers, in other words, without exposing uh, workers to harmful radiation? Um, just an example of what I'm saying is that uh, I was working in the pipes uh, section, and uh, there's something called um, support for pipes. 
pipes. What this means is that uh, there are these metal sections, apparently, that are used uh, to connect uh, pipes. And uh, normally, under normal conditions, they have to be soldered or welded on. Uh, however, um, in the uh, in the actual on the actual site, uh, the uh, pieces don't match. And basically, what people are doing there are just forcing the pipes, uh, you know, into each other without using that proper equipment, without using that metal sort of support around it. And as a result, uh, there was a great possibility that over time uh, there could be uh, new leakage problems. So how did you get found out and what happened to you when you were discovered? Are you still in touch with some of the people who are working there? Did you make friends among them? Um, in regard to um, how I was found out, uh, first of all, I do not use an uh, alias. I do not use a pen name. Uh, anyone that wants to investigate me, you can find uh, my face, my age, my, uh, my background, etc., on the internet. Uh, and the reason that I was found out was that uh, quite often the workers had to attend these kinds of seminars or meetings or lectures. And usually the workers were so um, tired that they would all basically be sleeping during the lectures. But I stood out because I was very enthusiastically taking notes. <laughs> Uh, however, uh, that was the actual reason that I was uh, discovered, and that's the reason that I was probably fired. But of course, uh, the, on, on the face of it, that was not why. Uh, the uh, hotels uh, where we were staying in Iwaki were all full. So basically, I was commuting from my home in Tokyo. And it was uh, found out, it was said that uh, this kind of long distance commute uh, was improper. And as a result, that's the uh, surface reason why I was fired. And in regard to the latter part of your questions, yes, I did make friends uh, while I was working there, and I'm still in contact with some of them. And also, after I left, I made more friends uh, in TEPCO and some of the partner companies, and I'm still in touch with them as well. Uh, I'm more interested in the question how you got employed in the first place. With your background as a, an author of books on Yakuza, and with the suggestion that Yakuza are involved in, in uh, the nuclear energy, how did you manage to get employed anyway, even if a subcontractor was doing it, and how... Uh, uh, were there actually the Yakuza involved in your employment, and if so, in what way? Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I don't believe that a, a true um, uh, full-scale um, restoration or recovery efforts have begun at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In other words, uh, the kinds of skills that are required by people who work there now are very, very simple skills. Uh, and uh, even uh, in regard to simple skills, uh, I'd never worked on a construction site before, so I had no experience. So before uh, I was employed uh, at Fukushima, I took the opportunity to be employed at construction sites uh, twice uh, in in, in Tokyo, uh, and as a result, I was able to uh, gain the fundamental skills necessary to work there. What I would like to say, first of all, is that uh, anyone who has any desire to work uh, in uh, 1F, uh, most uh, Japanese people would qualify in terms of level of skills. Um, in, actual, uh, in regard to uh, did I meet any, for example, Yakuza at the site, um, there was only one person, one Yakuza person that I actually met there. Uh, the Yakuza are very much involved uh, in this industry, but they are not involved as people working on site. They are in charge of collecting people, finding the people, finding the workers, who are, and dispatching them to the site. In fact, I discovered among my interviews that most of the people there really did not know that Yakuza had been involved uh, to bring them there. Um, I know that this is not really concrete proof, but just as an example of how the Yakuza are involved, um, it is said, it is rumored in many places that uh, after the accident, uh, some of the Yakuza-related people who drove only ordinary cars are now driving very, very expensive cars. Your background as a publisher on books on Yakuza, and if the Yakuza have a relationship with nuclear energy, it seems strange that you were employed as far as I'm concerned. Um, actually, uh, I went through uh, three different uh, sort of agencies or organizations uh, that were that involved Yakuza when I submitted my application to try to become a worker there, and uh, my applications were rejected partway through the process for all three companies. So as a result, I found another company which had no relationships with Yakuza, and that's where um, I found my actual employment. And after finishing uh, my um, work uh, afterwards, uh, I did interview some ten different Yakuza-related organizations as well. Uh, also, as you know, uh, uh, directives have been issued uh, which are supposed to, uh, ha which is say that uh, one cannot, one must expel a uh, yakuza uh, from different activities. Therefore, in the future, if one uh, is employed or works uh, in any way, uh, knowing that the counterparty or the people involved are yakuza, uh, that could be deemed to be an illegal activity in the future.
You mentioned several times that the workers cheat with their dosimeters and sometimes even to get like 10 minutes more work time. So how do you explain this? Does that mean workers get paid by the minute so that they would be so eager to extend even for 10 minutes? Can you explain how the workers are paid and why they want to extend their work time as long as possible? Uh, perhaps this is something that um, non-Japanese people may have trouble understanding, uh, but uh, the fact that so much uh, deception uh, perhaps uh, is used uh, in um, monitoring radiation levels is that uh, the work process, uh, the work schedule that has been presented uh, to the workers uh, require that a certain amount of time be used, and if uh, that work process, is that work schedule is going to be um, held fast to, there is no other option but uh, to cheat uh, on uh, those figures. Um, of course, from a non-Japanese point of view, uh, it might be more practical to say this work schedule is unworkable. It should be changed in some way. But again, this is where the Japanese culture part uh, perhaps comes in. And uh, people realize that if they were to express some kind of negativity, first of all, they might be fired. Uh, and that work process, would, uh, that work schedule would not be able to be realized. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, there are these cases where people kind of cheat with their um, dosimeters, but those are sort of minor cases. In extreme cases, people just leave their dosimeters uh, at home or in the shelter. They don't even attach them to their uh, clothing. And so, to be very honest, um, I think the workers bear responsibility uh, in some part for uh, the situation that they've created for themselves. Uh, if they had uh, the perhaps courage uh, or uh, were outspoken enough to complain to uh, TEPCO, things might be different. But they, on their own initiative, have chosen to take this other route. So they, in a sense, are knowingly exposing themselves to more radiation. So I think, uh, frankly, that a lot of the uh, workers realize uh, that uh, they are uh, <laughs> they are. Um, they bear responsibility that they're doing something incorrect, wrong. They understand this. Um, they do not get uh, extra payment for um, cheating on their uh, radiation uh, level uh, figures. Um, however, uh, I would also like to point out as a side point that uh, for the people who were working at the 1F, the Fukushima Daiichi plant, uh, TEPCO has not yet presented to the manufacturers, whether it's Toshiba, etc., um, the exact amounts uh, that they would pay for uh, a, an extra allowance for working in dangerous areas. Uh, they have not come to uh, a decision as to the pay scale or what kind of extra bonus might be paid for, hand for doing this kind of dangerous work. As a result, uh, Toshiba and the other manufacturers have already started paying out their own uh, dangerous work uh, allowances. Um, in regard to uh, leaving the dosimeters uh, in their dormitories or whatever and uh, not uh, using them, uh, you could say that as a result of uh, they're cheating on their uh, radiation levels. They are able to finish the work uh, on time, according to the work schedule. As a result, the company that they work for will be evaluated more highly, and they may receive some kind of a bonus. And that, in the end result, could also be shared by the workers. Uh, I received uh, 15,000 to 20,000 yen per day. Uh, I would also like to add that um, I don't mean to uh, toot my own horn, but um, I've contributed my um, earnings to two cities in the area, Okumacho, Okuma City and Futaba City. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, someone pointed out to me that I was earning double payment because not only was I uh, being paid for this work, but I was also going to be paid as a journalist for my expose work as well, and I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Okay, um, Atlantic Wire, uh, Jake two questions. First of all, in regard to the Fukushima 50, um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, this uh, group uh, and uh, were there actually Yakuza involved? Uh, and uh, the response was yes, there were three people uh, and I know uh, which uh, organizations they belong to, I know which plants uh, they were working at. Uh, but um, I cannot uh, say this with any certainty because uh, there was a time when these, uh, excuse me, these uh, uh, Yakuza uh, people uh, left uh, the industry for some time and when they came back to the industry, uh, a new list of names was put together, and uh, they are not on this. Uh, I haven't been able to get a list of this uh, new names, and so I cannot say for certain uh, that they were Yakuza, but I know these people, and I know that there are three of them there. And the second question has to do with the fact um, who, uh, which, in regard to Fukushima Prefecture, which um, Yakuza organization, uh, uh, to which uh, Yakuza organization did this territory belong to? 
Fukushima uh, my uh, understanding uh, is that the Fukushima nuclear power plant uh, number one uh, falls under the uh, in the territory of the um, Sumiyoshi Kai, uh, very big um, yakuza organization. Uh, but I am very tentative in saying this because I do not have actual proof, and also the uh, territorial rights for uh, regions is uh, very very complex. And uh, if you make a mistake, uh, the yakuza people can get very very angry. <laughs> so I want to be very very careful uh, in my um, assumptions. However, my fundamental understanding. Is it probably falls under the jurisdiction of the Sumi Yoshikai. Okay. I'm from Live Door. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, do you know what kind of, uh, um, how much of a cut uh, the Yakuza organizations take from your salaries? And also, it was said in the past that if you owed an enormous bet debt to a Yakuza organization, quite often to pay it off, you would be forced to uh, join a tuna boat tuna fishing boat. Uh, nowadays, uh, may we assume that that tuna boat has been replaced by Fukushima Daiichi? Um, in regard to uh, how much uh, they are taking uh, out of our salaries, it's very, very difficult to say, uh, in part because it's uh, really very much on a case-by-case -case basis. What I mean by this is that the uh, Yakuza structure is very much a pyramid structure, and there are many, many different companies involved. Uh, you have that top layer, and then you have like the first uh, subcontractor, first level subcontractor, uh, second tier subcontractor, all the way sixth, seventh. Uh, according to my investigations, I've seen that uh, there are even ten layers. Uh, there's a tenth level of subcontractor uh, quite often involved. Um, so depending on uh, where you are on that pyramid, you take a different kind of profit. Um, but uh, in my uh, understanding, as I mentioned earlier, at this point, uh, so far, TEPCO has not uh, started paying out any kind of an allowance for uh, dangerous work. As a result, um, I think probably on average, uh, the uh, dispatchers are taking maybe about 2,000, 2,500 yen, uh, maybe even as low as 1,000 yen for each worker. That doesn't sound like a great deal of money, but if you think about the fact that if uh, someone is a hiring is bringing in 10 people, 10 workers, and he, even if the, at the very lowest uh, scale he only makes 1,000 yen per worker, that's 10,000 yen a day, uh, and it's also tax-free. Uh, also, there are uh, times uh, when uh, the, uh, the uh, Yakuza are more directly involved uh, in the management of these uh, partner companies, in which case uh, it becomes uh, very much on a case-by-case -case basis with each individual worker. For example, say that uh, the um, uh, payment that is being given to the company for a person is 30,000 yen, and then, uh, that, pers then uh, that company decides how much to pay to each individual worker out of that 30,000 yen. If uh, a person is deemed to have very few skills, uh, then maybe he will take the company will take 10,000 out of that 30,000 yen as that company's profits. But if a person is deemed to be a very valuable worker with skills, they would only, they would only take 2,000 yen for that person and give the rest of the money to that worker. In regard to your twin boat question, actually uh, the idea of um, paying off your debts to a Yakuza organization by working at a nuclear power plant is not, an, is not something new. It's been occurring for the past 20 or 30 years, and I think it will only continue to increase in the future. Yeah, my question is a follow-up to what you just said. Um, I'm Martin Fritz with the German magazine Wirtschaftswoche. Sorry for so many Germans asking questions here. Uh, we seem to have a particular interest in this story. Um, uh, what kind of people um, were your colleagues? I mean, we heard the stories of nuclear gypsies. Uh, we heard the story about day laborers. Are these people local people from the Fukushima Ken? Uh, Fukushima Prefecture, or are they coming from all over Japan? Uh, are they educated? Um, are they very poor? Are they old or young? Could you just give us your impressions? Um, excuse me, um, I can only comment uh, not about all workers in general, but at least uh, the colleagues that I worked with. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, um, I worked uh, through, I received my, I was employed uh, through a company uh, that worked under the uh, Toshiba um, line of, of companies, a partner company working for the Toshiba uh, company. And I said earlier that, uh, you know, a lot of the workers didn't have to have any skills, but in actuality, some 99% of them had skills in the sense, and the interpreter was asking for clarification about what kind of skills they had skills in that they had the experience of working in a nuclear power plant, so whether it's civil engineering skills or whatever, they had experience. It was only perhaps only myself and maybe one other person that had absolutely no such experience or no such skills. In regard to a breakdown of ages, I think 10% uh, were in their 20s, 20% in their 30s, 
30% in their 40s, and the rest were in their 50s. And in regard to what kind of people uh, work in the nuclear power plant industry as workers, uh, they tend to be uh, the same people, and they go from plant to plant to plant. As you know, uh, reactors are shut down on a periodic basis for inspections, so they generally move from plant to plant uh, in time for these uh, inspections. Uh, in my experience, however, uh, I find it very rare that a nuclear uh, worker who works uh, for a TEPCO plant would then move to a Kyushu uh, nuclear power plant. They tend to move within that same company's territory again and again. And I don't know about their family situations, but uh, I believe that many of them are either people who are uh, not uh, loath to leave their families for many months, or uh, people who uh, are not married and have no families. Um, I mentioned earlier that my salary was about 15,000 or 20,000 yen uh, per day, and uh, I don't know if uh, this was something that was unique only to my company or not, but uh, there were some people uh, who had uh, more specialized skills, for example, who knew how to do uh, electricity or soldering um, uh, work. Uh, they were uh, receiving a much higher salary, um, 30,000 yen, 40,000 yen, 50,000 yen, uh, compared to my own salary. I should also point out that the salary was not done on a monthly basis, but on a daily basis, you were paid for the number of days you worked per, um, per month. And the person receiving the highest salary of the people that I worked with was a person in his 20s. And he was basically the leader of our group. And he, wore, he wore, earned as much as 1.1 million yen per month. <laughs> It was very much a person, uh, personal decision, perhaps. Um, he was one of the uh, F Fukushima 50. Uh, in other words, uh, he stayed on, even though he was very young, he stayed on uh, even right after the accident. And he had a great deal of experience. And also uh, the fact that he was so uh, devoted and dedicated uh, inspired the president of the company that hired me to pay him a lot of money. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, salaries uh, differ greatly depending on uh, which uh, man plant manufacturer uh, line uh, you are employed by. Um, the, uh, uh, the approach by the Hitachi um, related companies seem to be that they want to uh, use people up uh, very quickly, but they want to compensate them a great deal. Uh, I, apparently, there were some uh, there were rumors at the very beginning that people were being paid uh, a million yen, uh, just many many people. Uh, I was not able to find actual. Uh, I was not able to corporate. Corpor uh, this, uh, I found three people that I found actually had received a million yen at the very beginning, but I could not find many, many people of, of, uh, like that. Uh, Toshiba-related uh, companies take a very different approach. Uh, they would like basically uh, to keep the radiation exposures low and try to keep the people working as long as possible. Uh, literally, they would like to keep them basically on the brink of survival without killing them off. Um, I also um, heard that uh, in Iwaki Prefecture, there is this uh, public employment security agency. And through this uh, employment agency, or related to this employment agency, uh, a, a, a Yakuza-related organization offered work uh, to, um, uh, to work at the plant. And uh, the salaries that were being given there were about 200,000 yen per month. So there is great diversity variety. Henry Tricks from The Economist. Can I just clarify uh, something? So you, you, you talk about these subcontractors, and we know that below Hitachi and Toshiba, there's lots and lots of levels of subcontractors. But you, you seem to imply that they're pretty much all Yakuza. Um, and I, I wonder how you know, or like how you can tell the difference between what is a Yakuza subcontractor and what isn't a Yakuza subcontractor. Um, I would like to clarify, um, I'm not saying that uh, all of the uh, subcontractors are related to Yakuza. In fact, I think the number is much, much smaller. I would, my impression is, is that about 10% of the, co of the companies involved, the um, subcontractors involved, are, uh, have some kind of Yakuza uh, connection. Um, the reason you can find this is that uh, if you look at the company charter uh, of these uh, companies, uh, you can find out immediately whether they are Yakuza related or not. The reason for this is that uh, in other uh, major metropolitan areas, whether it's Tokyo or Osaka or the island of Kyushu, which traditionally have been strongholds for Yakuza organizations, um, the police crackdown on Yakuza organizations has been very severe in recent years. And as a result, for many of what we call the front companies, the companies that uh, do uh, the work uh, of Yakuza's, they tend uh, to be very discreet. And uh, no Yakuza-related people ever put their names on uh, the company, for example, um, board of directors um, uh, list. 
However, until now, the Tohoku region, the northeastern Japan region, was much more lax. Uh, there wasn't so much of a police crackdown. So if you look at the company charters of many of these companies, you can find that a person who is on the uh, police list as being uh, related to uh, Yakuza organizations has without any kind of hesitation listed his name as the president of the company. So it's very easy to track them down. Um, another uh, feature, however, of these kinds of organizations or these kinds of companies is that they do not uh, have any written contracts. Quite often it's a verbal uh, agreement that, yes, I know you need more people. Okay, I'll find 10 or 20 more people for you. Uh, and so they do not leave a paper trail. Uh, and it's very difficult, therefore, to find proof. But again, as I mentioned, um, my fundamental feeling is that some at least 10% of the uh, workers uh, at the plant have been arranged for by yakuza related organizations the question was about uh, the uh, sorry the uh, blood producing stem cells which uh, the interpreter looked it up earlier is called um, hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, these are blood-producing stem cells. Um, but uh, in spite, why, why did only two people um, use uh, these uh, sample, use this procedure to extract some cells uh, so that they would have them on hand in case they were developed acute radiation po um, poisoning, even though a very famous doctor uh, at uh, Toronomon Hospital recommended this? Uh, is it partly because there was not enough awareness of this uh, procedure, or was it because uh, the costs were prohibitive? And the answer is that that, um, I think there was certainly enough um, uh, awareness uh, about uh, this issue. Uh, and um, in fact, uh, the doctor Taniguchi at uh, Toronto Hospital said he received many queries about this. In fact, some of the typical employees also came to him uh, to uh, ask if uh, this might be something that they could consider. Uh, and until really, until the uh, project was about to take off in a very big way, right before the project was about to uh, take off in a very big way, it suddenly, the movement suddenly shut down. And part of this was due to the fact that the Japanese government publicly declared that there was no need for such uh, treatment, for such procedures to be done. And when we also consider uh, the fact that the uh, self-defense forces have a medical hospital and uh, a university hospital, uh, it, it is possible for people who are really concerned to go and have the procedure done there without having it exposed to the public. My personal feeling is that many people got uh, this procedure done there. <laughs> Uh, in regard to the costs, um, because um, I was a member of the mass media, I wanted to pay, you know, full costs, not have be a burden on anyone. I paid 200,000 yen for the extraction of my uh, blood-producing stem cells. Um, but uh, for average workers, the cost was 100,000 yen. And Dr. Taniguchi said that this is something that um, ethically should not be borne by the uh, person receiving uh, the uh, procedure, but should be borne by the government. So I'm going to issue everybody a receipt and eventually to hang on to it, and eventually you can ask the government for this. Um, payment. Therefore, costs should not be have been a prohibitive factor. And the next question was uh, in regard to uh, uh, being uh, employed at Fukushima. You said earlier that uh, you were employed by a regular company. How did you find it? Did you look on the internet to find this company? <laughs> The way I found my company it was very, very simple. Um, I was doing a lot of investigative uh, reporting work, uh, visiting many, many different companies. And as I was having a conversation with one of the companies, uh, the president said, well, if you want to work there, I can arrange that for you. So I immediately pounced upon this opportunity. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I just want to ask, are you worried about your own health? Uh, in regard to uh, my own health, um, uh, what's done is done. I'm not going to worry any more about this, uh, so I don't unduly worry about my health. The last point that I would, however, like to make is that um, I believe that the situation in Fukushima is quite dire, and as a result, I think more, much more attention should be directed uh, toward uh, this situation. But the reality is that, unfortunately, the Japanese media have turned uh, away from uh, this issue. Uh, I personally have a great deal of information about the current state of affairs there. Uh, I am more than willing uh, to offer uh, any... Uh, I would, uh, to accept any interviews, uh, to answer any questions that you may have. If you would like to use my pictures, etc., I would be more than happy to provide you with any information uh, so that you can write your articles. It uh, makes me very, very sad that, that I have to ask the foreign press to do this, but please uh, write more, uh, present more about the Fukushima uh, nuclear accident to your readers. Okay, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you very much.